all meaning really bottom line at the beginning, a way to bind back and make whole. All these technologies are a reflection of our inner potential. Your heart is yours, your life is yours. It's time to take that responsibility. Welcome back to episode 41 of Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, finding meaning and purpose in all the chaos and mayhem that is going on in our lives, in our communities, in our state, in our country, and all over the world, right? So how is it possible that all these things, all this chaos and mayhem is happening all at once? in everything, everywhere, all at once, right? And that's because they're all be, it's all been driven by the frequency, the vibration of the earth, which is increasing, and it's pushing us out of our minds, right? It's pushing all of the held up uh, emotions and trauma that we've experienced, is pushing it out onto the physical plane, which is why we've, we're experiencing this cycle now where we have 32 wars going on right now. Uh, most people are focused on one particular one, which is going on, of course, in Gaza right now. Uh, and the terrible tragedies that are happening there, the trauma that's happening there, and the atrocities that have been happening before and now during this particular war. So what does all this mean? How do we find meaning in all this? Well, like I said, it's happening because of this increase in vibration. This is all being driven to get rid of all this stuff. We're in a, in a period, if you watch a vibration, if you send it through uh, any kind of material like water, the vibration increases, increases, increases. It creates these beautiful geometric patterns, which ultimately are the building blocks of life that form the five platonic solids. But also there are stages where the whole complex geometrical patterns break down and they go into a period of what seems like chaos. But it's in that period that things are being reorganized, things are being resituated in, pre uh, in preparation for a more complex and higher frequency to create a more complex geometric pattern, which creates a new experience and a new reality. You know, one example I use is, you know, in the, in the body, if you break down a muscle, as it breaks down, it goes into a chaotic state and then it re groups. It gets stronger. The fibers of the muscle grow stronger and it grows more fibers and becomes even more powerful. Same thing with fires in the forests and of course um, tsunamis and all these things create a new beginning. Not very comfortable, not something we really want to go through, but sometimes it's necessary to get us to the next stage and that's what we're experiencing right now. So we've talked about well how we're going to get through this and what's on the other side. And so we're talking about heartism as, uh, you know, in a way, a new religion. In that, religion is a word, its original form, derived from uh, re uh, reglio, which went to religare, but also, but all meaning really, bottom line at the beginning, a way to bind back and make whole. And we all want to be bound back and made whole by our connection to whatever you want to call it, the higher self, to God the universe, because we are connected to that and we've forgotten. And we've forgotten how to tune in, right? So the ancients always said what? Live from the heart. Speak from the heart. If something is true, it will be heartfelt. So look, if we speak from the heart, we actually move into a different space. It doesn't come from quite so high up, right? We really feel it here. You can almost feel the, the vibrations of your vocal cords in your heart. You can, right? And when we speak from the heart, it's a different pace. It's a different tonality. It's a different sound, which gives it a different frequency, a different vibration. And when we listen with our heart, our heart can tell from the vibration, the frequency. If we just listen and close our eyes, we can actually tell if what the person is saying is authentic or not, if it's the truth or not. And the same thing applies to us because we are consciousness. And consciousness is a field. They call it the unified field, right? And that's vibratory. It's like an instrument. And when you play an instrument, you can play it out of tune and you can play it in tune, can't you? And our ears can tell whether it's in tune or not, right? Pretty quickly, right? Now, some people can tell even more than others, right? As you get better and better at tuning in and being able to tell 
listen, usually with your eyes closed, whether it's tuned in properly or not. And our heart is an instrument and it plays at a certain frequency and it receives information at a frequency and it can tell based on those frequencies if something is true or not. So we're starting to realize, see with our real eyes, which are our feelings, that our heart needs to be the center of our intelligence. Our heart has neurons, right? It has a brain, a separate brain from our brain. And it's our heart that it's usually communicating with our brain more than our brain communicating with our heart. You know, the Yupik elders, an ancient tribe in Alaska, say that, you know, today we live in a reverse society or the inside out society. They say it used to be that our heart would tell our brain what to do. You know, it used to be that we would teach our children how to live, and now we teach them how to make a living. It used to be that we respected our elders, and now we respect youth, money, and possessions. We live today in a society 90% driven by our mind, but it used to be that our brain was the servant of our heart. But most people have forgotten how to connect to their heart how to use their heart. And we need to go back to that. You see, the mind, the brain, can never be in the present. It's either in the future or the past. It's never in the now. But our brain is always in the present. Sorry, our heart is always in the present. And that's where we need to be. That's where all the joy in life is, in the now. And so to come into the now, we need to become heart-driven in our lives. We need to recognize our heart truly is our CIA, our Central Intelligence Agency. And it's our HQ headquarters, yeah, but also our heart is quantum. When we connect to our heart, we're also connecting to the earth and to the universe. We're connecting to a quantum instrument. We're in the process of building quantum computers. What have I said? All these technologies are a reflection of our inner potential. We don't need those external technologies. We have the technology within us, but we will keep building it on the external world, in the external world, until we realize, see with our real eyes, that we already have it. They are stepping stones to coming back to who we really are and what we really are. So, heartism could be a new religion in that, you know, who's going to be the leader? You, <laughs> who's in charge? You, right? So you're responsible. If things go wrong, it's your responsibility, your ability to respond. Who takes account of all this? You do. So you have accountability, right? It's you. Your heart is yours. Your life is yours. It's time to take that responsibility and accountability. And that is the future of humanity. The next consciousness, the next step for humanity is to live from, speak from, and recognize that if something is true, it will be heartfelt. And that will be a more peaceful world, a more loving world, a world where you can live at a quantum level. It gives you more freedom because you don't have to spend hours, days, and weeks thinking things through, making mistakes, and then realizing you knew that in the beginning. How many times have you said, oh, I knew that. I knew I should have done it that way. It's because your heart told you in the first place, but you decided to revert to your brain, which led you astray. So this is the new world. So what I want in the next episode of Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, which is how we can live in the quantum experience of our heart, I'm going to show you how you can get connected to your heart and have coherence. In the meantime, Sapere Ord. Dare to be wise.